In this video, we're gonna continue looking at Django and HTMX and building the finance application. Now, in the last video, we built this custom query set class where we added four methods to the default query set in Django. And then we added some tests in PyTest to test the functionality of those methods. What we're gonna do in this video is we're going to add the summary statistics that are computed by our new methods to the user interface of the application. So let's get started right away with that. We're gonna to go to views.py and within this transactions list view, we're gonna add these summary statistics to the context that we're sending back to the template. So just above the context, what we're gonna do is create a couple of variables. So let's start with total income. And what we're gonna do here is sum up the income for all of the user's transactions. Now we have a filter that's been applied based on a form submitted from the front end. So we're gonna copy the name of that filter and we can get access to the filtered query set using the dot query set property. And then once we have that, we can call those custom query set methods. Now to get the total income, let's go to our managers.py file and we're gonna look at the methods that we added. To get the total income, we can call this function here. It's called get total income. And that's the function that uses the ORM's aggregate method. And it sums up the amount column across the query set. So we're gonna copy the name of this and we can go back to views.py and we're gonna call that custom method here on the filtered transaction query set. That'll give us the total income. And then we're gonna get a variable called total expenses. And again, we're going to use transaction filter.query set. And this time the method that we're gonna call of course, is the get total expenses method. So let's copy that and we're gonna paste that in there and that's gonna compute the total expenses for the transactions associated with this user. So here we are making use of these custom query set methods that we added. We're now going to add them to the context dictionary that we're sending to the template. So what we're gonna do here is add a couple of keys, one for the total income, and that's gonna be equal to that number that we're getting back from get total income. And I'm gonna copy this line down below here and we're gonna reference total expenses in the context as well by referencing the value coming back from this method here. Now, when we have income and expenses, we can do a subtraction and get the net income. So let's create another key in the context called net income. And that's gonna be equal to the total income minus the total expenses. So imagine your income was 20,000, your expenses was 10,000. The net income in that case is gonna be 10,000 because that's basically the subtraction of the expenses from the income. So we need to now display these numbers in the template and I'm gonna start the Django server and I'm gonna to go to the browser and I'm on the transactions list page just now. Just above this table here, we want to show those summary statistics. So let's open up the template partial that we created in a previous video. So I'm gonna to go to the templates directory and the transactions container.html. We're going to open that up and this is the container around all of the transactions and also the form that we can see on that page. And we're gonna to go to this div here. It has a column span of three and that's the columns for the table itself. So if we go back to the page here, you can see that we have three columns for the table and we have one out of four columns for the form. So we're gonna target the table and just above the existing table, we're going to create a new one. So let's open up VS Code and within this div, but above the template if statement, I'm gonna paste in some code here. So we have a header one tag that says totals. And what we're gonna do below that is define another table and we're gonna use the Daisy UI component class of table. And within this table, we're going to have three columns. So again, I'm gonna paste some code in here. We're gonna define a table header and we have three columns, one for the total income, one for expenses, and one for the net income. Those are the three different values that we added to the context here in this view function. And we're now going to display these in this template. So let's go to the table and we're gonna define a table body now. And what we're gonna do in the table body is just render out those summary statistic values. So let's just create a single table row in this particular body. And within the table row, we're gonna create some table data elements. So let's start with the total income and that's going to be, let's say in dollars for this video. Let's reference the value that we have in the context for total income. And we'll close that table data element. I'm gonna copy that down two more times and we're also going to reference the total expenses. And finally, we can reference the net income. Now I'm gonna save this and go back to the page and we're going to refresh this page. 
And you can see we get back a new table just above the other table. And that has the total values for income, expenses, and also the net income, as you can see on the page. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add another header to the page. So this header says totals, and then we want another header just below here for the second table. That tells us that the second table contains our transactions. So let's go back to the template. And this header one tag here that's using pros and pros 2 Excel, and these are from the Tailwind CSS typography plugin. We're gonna copy that H1, and we're gonna add a very similar H1 here just below this div. So let's paste that in here, and I'm gonna change the text within this from totals to transactions. Now, once we've done that, we can go back to the page, and we're gonna look at the page again. And now we have a second header. I'm gonna add some different margin below this original table. So let's do that just now. We'll go back to VS Code. We've got margin top of four here. I'm gonna change that to margin top eight. And that's gonna give it more space between the header and the transactions themselves. So let's see that now. And you can see now we have a bit more space above the transactions header. And let's cut down the space below this transactions header as well. So we have a margin bottom of six. I'm gonna change that to four in both of these particular H1 tags. And then we can save this and go back to the page. And I think that looks a bit better. So let's now focus on the totals. The values at the moment, I wouldn't say are particularly readable. We have a lot of numbers after the decimal point, for example. And also the numbers do not have a comma or anything that indicates what the thousands are or the millions or so on. So we want to add a comma to the number in thousands. And we also want to cut down on the number of digits after the decimal place. So let's start with that. We're gonna go back to VS Code. And for each one of these summary statistics, we're gonna use a Django template filter, and it's the float format filter. So what does the float format filter do? Let's go to the Django documentation. And I'll leave a link to this below the video, but when it's used without an argument, it will round a floating point number to one decimal place, but it's only gonna do that if there's a decimal part to be displayed. As you can see below, it takes this number here, and when we call float format, it rounds it to a single decimal place. Now, if you pass an integer argument to the float format filter, it's going to round the number to that many decimal places. So if we specify float format with an argument of three, it's gonna round the value to three decimal places. What we're gonna do is pass a value of two into this. So let's use that here, and that's because we are working with money data, and typically we want to round that to two decimal places. I'm gonna copy this filter and we're gonna use it in both the other summary statistics as well. So that's quite useful to know about in Django if you have these floating point numbers and you want to display it nicely on the page. If we save this and go back to our page, we're now gonna see that these are rounded to two decimal places. And that's more readable. We don't have lots of numbers appearing on the line. And we're gonna do one more thing. We're going to add a comma to the number so that we can clearly see how many thousands there are in this particular number. So I'm gonna load a page in the Django documentation. And it's this page here on the django.contrib.humanize package. And these are a set of template filters useful for adding a human touch to data. Now to activate these filters, we need to add django.contrib.humanize to installed apps. What we're gonna do is go to our settings.py file within this project. And we're gonna go down to installed apps and we're going to add Humanize just below the static files installed app. And then we can save installed apps and go back to our template. Now in order to use a particular template filter from the Humanize framework, we need to load the Humanize template filters at the top. So let's use load Humanize in order to do that. And then that's gonna give us access to the template filters in the Humanize framework. Now what filters does this give us? Here's one, it's called AP number. And that's gonna turn numbers such as one into their associated press style, such as one, two, and so on. And the one that we're going to use is this one, it's called int comma. And this is gonna convert an integer or a float to a string containing commas every three digits. So as an example, the number 4,500 is gonna have that comma inserted, and that's much more readable for humans who can immediately see what the number is. And it's particularly useful for large numbers, such as this one here, at first glance, you might not know what that number is, but after adding the commas, you can immediately see it's 4,500,000. So we're gonna use int comma. Let's go back to the template now, and we're gonna go back down to these statistics, and after the float format filter, we're gonna add int comma. And I'm gonna paste that below to the other two summary statistics as well. And we're gonna save this, and let's go back to the page, 
I'm not going to test this out. So if I refresh this page, you can now see that we have nicely formatted numbers here with the comma and with two decimal places. And that clearly shows this monetary data. So we have a total income of 15,515 and we can see the total expenses is 12,958. So the net income is the subtraction of the expenses from the income and that's 2,556. Now in the last video we added some tests for our query set functionality. If we look at testmodels.py we were testing these custom methods that we added to the query set. I'm going to create a new file in the tests directory and that's going to be called testviews.py. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to check that these numbers for total income, total expenses and net income, we're going to check that these all appear in the context when we hit this particular URL and view combination in Django. So what we're going to do to start with is create a new fixture in PyTest. So let's go to conftest.py. Now beforehand we created this transactions fixture. We're going to create another one now and that's going to be called user transactions. So let's decorate that with pytest.fixture and we're going to call the name of the function user underscore transactions. Now the idea here is that we want to create the same number of fixtures, 20, but we want to tie every single one of them to the same user. That's the key part. We want every one of these transactions to be tied to the same user. Now if we look at the fixture that we have above here called transactions, that's going to take the transaction factory and it's going to create 20 of those. Let's look at factories.py and we can see that the transaction factory contains the user property and that's set to a subfactory and that's going to create a user for each transaction. So that means when we create 20 transactions in the method that we had before, every single one of those is going to be tied to a different user that's going to be created at runtime and attached to each transaction. So in order to tie all 20 transactions to the same user, what we're going to do is we're going to create that user beforehand and we're going to instantiate the user factory in order to do that. And we need to import that from factories.py at the top here. So we've created a user and then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this return statement and I'm going to paste that in here. But as well as creating a batch of 20, what we're going to do is we're going to attach all of them to the same user by overriding the default setting and passing the user in. So that's going to create 20 transactions in the database and all of them are going to be associated with the same user. Let's now go to testviews.py and at the top I'm going to import pytest. And what we're going to do here is create some functions or rather we're going to create a single function and the code in this function is going to check that the totals are in the context for each of those summary statistics. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called test total values appear on list page. And we're going to inject that fixture that we just created called user transactions into this test function. And we're also going to inject the client fixture from PyTest Django. So PyTest Django gives you access to the Django test client and that allows you to send requests and test URLs and different functionality in your application. So let's now do that. But before we do, we're going to go to testmodels.py and I'm going to copy this PyTest mark and it's the Django DB mark. We're going to decorate this function with that and that's going to tell PyTest that this function is allowed to access the database. We need that because we're going to create objects in the database using this fixture. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a request that's going to hit this view here and this view has the login required decorator. So when we send a request, the user that's sending that request is going to need to be logged in. So let's start by getting the user. We're going to look at the user transactions and remember that's a list of transactions and each one of those is going to have a user property. So let's look at the very first transaction and we're going to get the user from that. And remember all of these transactions will have the same user. And then we're going to use the test client which has a function called force login. And we can pass a user into that and that's going to authenticate the user with this test client. Once we've done that, we're going to create a couple of values here to sum up the income from the transactions as well as the expenses. So let's create a variable called income total and that's going to be equal to calling the sum function and we're going to iterate over each t in the user transactions and we're going to get the amount for that transaction so t dot amount for t in user transactions and remember user transactions these are coming from the fixture that we created and then what we're going to do here is add an if statement to this and we're going to check that t dot type is equal to income and that's because we only want to sum up these transactions to get the total for the income. 
and I'm going to copy this statement to the line below and we're going to create a variable called expense total. And this time we're going to change the if statement and only get back expenses and again we're going to sum up the amount for all of those transactions. And finally we can create a variable called net here and that's going to be equal to income total minus expense total. And now we can use the client and we're going to send a request to the URL that's associated with this view here in Django. And let's go to urls.py and it's this particular URL path here. We're going to copy the name of that and we're going to reference that in the test. At the top here, I'm going to cop I'm going to import sorry from Django.urls the reverse function in Django, and we're going to pass the name of that particular URL into the reverse function. So let's start by calling client.get. We're going to send a get request using the Django PyTest client, and we're going to reverse that transactions list URL, and that's going to get back the particular URL for that page, and then we can get a response by calling client.get. So we have a response and then we can inspect some of the properties of that response. And that's what we're going to do now to make sure that the values for income, expenses and net income match the expected values that we have here in the test function. So I'm going to create these assertions just below. We're going to assert that response.context and then we're going to index into the context and get the total income. Let's check that that is equal to the income total that we pulled out on line 9 above. So we're taking the response after calling client.get and we're getting the context values. We are getting the total income out of that context and we're checking that it's equal to this sum statement. I'm going to copy this line down twice and as well as the total income, we're going to check for the total expenses. So let's copy that key from the context and we're going to paste that in here and we're going to check that that's equal to the expense total. So let's paste that in there. And finally, we're also going to check the net income. So let's copy that. And we're going to get that out of the context and make sure it's equal to this net variable that we have on line 11. And that's our test here. What we're going to do is go to the terminal. I'm going to stop the Django server and we're going to run the pytest command. And that's going to run the test that we've just written here. And we're getting an error and that's that a none type object is not subscriptable. And that's a very simple problem here. I didn't save conftest.py. So let's save that file and clear the terminal and we're going to retry running the pytest command and hopefully this time we're going to get that the test passes and you can see that it has passed. So let's quickly go over what's happening in the test. First of all we create a pytest fixture that instantiates a user and then creates 20 transactions for that user. And then within testviews.py we are creating a function here and we're injecting the user transactions into that function. We then get a reference to the user and we log them into Django using the client.forceLogin function. And then we take the user transactions and we calculate the total income and total expenses as well as the net income for the given transactions that have been generated by the factory. And then we use the client to send a GET request to the transactions list URL. That will then send that request to the transaction list view here that adds these values to the context. And then what we're doing in the test function is we're checking the response context to ensure that the values that we expect are in that context and that they're equal to the expected numbers. And this test gives us confidence that the summary statistics will always be on the page. So if you go about refactoring the application and somehow you lose these particular values, they're no longer being added to the page, this test is gonna capture that and this test will also check to make sure that the values are as expected for a user's transactions. So that's all for this video. We've taken the aggregated values for total income and total expenses from that custom query set object, and we're now displaying them on the template. We're displaying them on the page. And if we start the server and go back, we can see these numbers appearing here. And we also use some template filters in Django. Namely, we use the float format filter, and that will round to a given number of decimal places. And we also use the int comma filter from the humanized package to display these numbers in a human readable manner. And finally, we added a pytest function that's going to test that these values are in the context and that they are equal to the expected values across a range of transactions. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the form on the right hand side here, and we're going to add some additional filters. So we're going to allow users to filter the transactions by category, which is a foreign key, remember. And we're also going to allow them to filter between a start and an end date. And the submission of that form is again going to be done with HTMX. And what we should notice, and this is something I actually haven't done in this video, 
When we submit this, we expect the values at the top to update. So for example, if I filter the transactions to only income, when we click that button, you can see that the resulting transactions have been filtered down. So our total income remains the same. Our expenses have went to zero though, and that makes sense because when we filter to only income, we're not gonna have any expenses in the database. So these filters continue to work with HTMX, even with these summary statistics that we're adding to the page. And that's because the template partial that's being returned when HTMX sends a request, when that form is submitted, that partial already contains these values. And that means that they're going to update dynamically when we submit the form. So thanks again for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying this content and consider buying the channel a coffee it would be greatly appreciated. We'll see you in the next video.